What's up everybody, this is Kevin here from Happy Beard Games, and today we're doing a new thing. It's uh, Final Fantasy XI Online, the MMORPG from Square Enix. It's a long-running MMO. Uh, and just as recently, recent news from an update on Square Enix, they are slowly winding down the game, it seems. Um, they announced they're not going to have any major patches, or like big update patches at least, and there's not going to be any more expansions. However, in that news update, there was, um, they're gonna have still continuing updates, like minor patches, I guess. And, um, they're basically switching their focus from Final Fantasy XI to the newer MMO, Final Fantasy XIV, which I've also played in the past, by the way. But yeah, they are, they're slowly winding things down on Final Fantasy XI, which is why I want to take some time to look back at the game Final Fantasy XI and see what it's like to start out in the later years of the game. Now, this is 2015, so it's way after the game came out, like about... I don't know, I think it came out in 2002, as indicated on the uh, title screen, but I don't know when it arrived in North America. Now, I bought this game when it first came out on the PlayStation 2, with the hard drive bundle, and it was a lot of fun. Um, I had uh, all the way up to the Chains of Promathia expansion pack, which was only the second one, because the first one, Rise of the Zillar, came included with it. So basically, what I'm going to do in this little video, video series here, is I'm going to show... Um, I'm going to do basically the intro of what it's like to play the game Final Fantasy XI in the year 2015, starting new. Um, and uh, I'm just going to do three videos at first, see how they go. If anyone wants to see more or has any suggestions or ideas, throw that in the comment box on any of these three videos. And I will get to that, I will reply to you, I'll respond, and I'll take everything into consideration. So um, we're going to get started pretty quick here. Now I do want to point out that a couple things. Um, I have a character on this game. It's not the same character from when I was on the PlayStation 2. There's about an 8 year... 8 year? 6 year? At least 6 years gap of me not playing this game. And this is on a different account too. Um, I do have a character right now who is level 25. And I've been playing a little bit solo. Um, this, is no, this new character I'm going to create just for this video is going to be solo, but it's going to be different than my main character. Uh, so it's going to be different than what I normally play. Now I do have all the expansion packs except for the newest one, the Seekers of Adulin. And I do not have that one yet, so uh, I might get that in the future. It is about thirty dollars on Steam, if, if I remember correctly. I bought this on Steam a couple years ago. I only played it briefly, and I've actually played it the most recently. Um, I played it the most in the most recent days. So let's get started with Final Fantasy XI Online. I hope you hope you uh, tag along with me for this journey. Okay, here we go. We're going to create a character now. The setup process for this game, I'm not going to show. Because uh, there's a lot of um, things that you have to do on the Square Enix to make an account, and it's a little confusing. Um, a couple things that I want to point out about the Square Enix account creation. If you forgot your password, at, like I did, you can't get your password back. You have to uh, you have to subscribe before you can get your password back. It's really weird. It's a, you have to have that uh, subscriber set up to uh, before you can do the password recovery. So I just want to point that out to clear things up a bit, a little bit. Um, and then another thing I want to point out, just just to get this cleared out, I have the graphics and uh, you know detail settings on full. I have everything as the highest that I can set them to, I believe, so it should look its best. Um, the recording software I'm using is called Bandicam, and it has a logo up here uh, because I didn't have the purchase version, uh, but I, I do support them. So um, yeah, the only reason I'm using this software is because it's the only one I have that can record. Um, the mouse. I mean, we, need to, we need to have the mouse pointer, because I'm using the mouse. Uh, you can also play with a controller, as did in the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox 360 editions, which are all on the same servers. Uh, it's all the same game, but I'm going to play with the mouse for now, because it's a little bit easier for me to do at this time. Okay, so we're going to start out really quick here. Okay, so we are at the character creation, and I already have a character in mind. So I think I know what I'm going to do, but let's just show the races. There's the two Hume races, which are basically humans. Uh, you got male and female, and they have pretty uh, pretty average stats, I guess you could say. I don't know. I'm not really sure what job they're more suited for, because each uh, race has a different uh, you know, Final Fantasy job to, to be suited for a little bit more with their stats. Uh, sort of like in Dungeons and Dragons a little bit. You, know, you might know what I mean. It's basic role-playing stuff. Um, and you got the Elvons, which are like, they're like elves, basically. Uh, a little different, I guess, but they're unique in their own way, and they have male and female for that. Um, now the character customization isn't really too robust in this game. Uh, from what I remember, it's uh, still pretty much the exact same. 
as it was back when the game launched. So there's there's not very many options on character creation or editing. And then you've got the Taru Taru, which are uh, they're basically your halflings, but they're more like mages in this game. Um, they, they usually focus on black magic and white magic, and you've got the male and female of them as well. Uh, now these next two races uh, are completely different, and there's only one for male and one for female. So the female, you got the Mithra, which are a cat-like race, cat people. Uh, and that's pretty cool too. And you've got the Galka, which are only male in this game. In Final Fantasy XIV, they have a female Mithra cat person type uh, race, as well as male female, or as a male uh, cat people as well. So they have both, and they also have both for the Galka type people. Because in Final Fantasy XIV, they borrow the same races, but they change the names and made them a little bit different. Okay, so the Galka is uh, the big giant hulkish guys with lizard tails, and that's who we're going to choose today because we're going to be a warrior. I'm not entirely sure if it's the best class for warrior or the best race for warrior, but I think it is because of the strength. And I just want to be a warrior uh, for my starting class. Now I did some research on the Final Fantasy XI Wikipedia um, because I was playing on my own and I didn't really know what to do. This game's kind of confusing, and it's still going to be a little confusing for me. So bear with me, guys. This is a new player ish starting in the year 2015 on an old MMO so let's do this um, so basically we got eight face choices I already know what the one I want because I've gone through it before um, but they're, they're, these two are pretty similar it's just the hairs up and the hairs down on that one the hairs up on the sides um, face three I think you've got gray hair yeah face four see they're not exactly just the face it's more like your head basically um, that one is like brownish hair this one, I think, has reddish hair, yep. And then this one is a bald guy. And each one of these faces has additional two choices between them. This one is more like a spiky hair. And this is the one we're going to choose, number eight. A little bit spiky, a little bit like a faux hawk. Let's click on eight. And then we've got gray or black. I'm going to do black. And you can choose your size. I haven't really noticed it too much in-game because I haven't really compared it with anyone, but it's just your size of your basic player model. So I want it to be large. And then uh, we have the five, or excuse me, the six um, traditional Final Fantasy original uh, classes or jobs to pick from to start our character with. There's plenty more jobs to get later on, and once you get to, I think, level 18 or so, you can start going on to your uh, secondary job where you can have, like, you can basically cross class. You can have two classes at once going on your character. It's pretty cool. Um, so we have Warrior, which is what I'm going to choose. We have Monk, which is more like a fighter. Um, warrior is more like you know, swords, axes. Um, then we got White Maid, which is healing magic, support. And then you got Black Magic, which is uh, fighting magic, uh, attack, and offense. And red Magic is a mix of both, but a uh, uh, jack of all trades, but uh, not a master at either Black or White Magic necessarily. Um, and by the way, my other character is a Black Mage, so this is going to be very different than what I normally play. And uh, then we got Thief, which is pretty self-explanatory. So let's get on with it and click on Warrior. Now we're going to name my character. I spell that right. Yes, I did. And we're going to the Bahamut server, which is the same server as my other character. So if you want to join me at any point, um, let me know. I'll probably be on my other character more often, but um, I will probably talk to you if you do do you meet me on the Bahamut server. Okay, here we go. So hopefully that name is not taken. Okay, it's not. Okay, cool. So now we have three places to start out with. Um, I really want to choose Sandoria, uh, even though this is actually the Elf City. So this is the Elf City for the starting area, but you can choose any city no matter what your race is, because they have varied people within each kingdom. Uh, you got Bastuk, which is what I was going to choose originally. This is where the Galka are from, as well as the Humes. And it's a mining area. Oh, this place is uh, a forest kingdom. Um, and there's a lot of knights. And it's basically like a real kingdom. The castle and everything. And then you got Winders, which is uh, where the Tarotaro and the Mithra are from. It's sort of like an African setting. It's on a different continent. And uh, you have to go there by boat. And it takes about two hours to get from Winders to uh, one of these places. So, by walking at, at the start of the game. Um, and yeah, so... This one's pretty cool, this is where I started out on my other character. Bastuk is what I thought I was going to do, but I'm going to choose Sandoria because I, I remember it fondly and I think I'll have the most nostalgia factor for me over in Sandoria, and I actually think I remember, remember the layout pretty well. 
even some of the quests. So let's register Granadin and begin play. Here we go, guys. Okay, player data registered. Here we go. Now this first episode is going to be like the intro cutscene and stuff, and just I'll show you basically what I'd like to set out. The next episode, um, we might get into some fighting, and I'm not sure what part three will be, but I just want to do three parts and see how it goes on YouTube. I've never done an MMO. I've never done, um, I haven't, even, I haven't even recorded a PC game in a long time, like a computer game. But, um, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. A lot of nostalgia coming on, because I haven't played this game very much recently, and I haven't played it nearly as much as I played it on the PlayStation 2 back in the day. Which, by the way, guys, if you want to get into this game, um, okay, yeah, there's this text here, and it goes by way too fast, so, uh, I don't even think I'll be able to read it. But you can read it there, you can pause if you need to. Um, yeah, it does go by really fast. Um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, they are closing down the service on the PlayStation 2. It's just crazy that PlayStation 2 has lasted this long, but still, it's kind of sad that they are shutting it down. They're also shutting down the Xbox 360 access for the game, and they are also um, winding down the Windows access, but they're not ending it on Windows yet. Uh, so if you want to get the game, it's on Square Enix's website. Uh, of course, and it's also, you can get it on Amazon, you can also get it on Steam, which is where I got it on Steam. Okay, so basically there's a kingdom, there's elven knights, and we're setting out in this town, we are a warrior. That's pretty much all you need to know. There's a little bit of a backstory there, but you can pause, um, and read that. I, I would have read it, but it does go by very, very quickly, and you can't, you can't pause it. Now, before I start with the actual game after this intro, because um, there's going to be more of a uh, conversation coming up, I need to set up some of the options, and I'll show you what the options look like as well. It's a pretty generic intro. Basically, like, you're a hero, you're, uh, you're starting out. Or, actually, not a hero, but you're a, a want-to-be hero. You're uh, uh, starting out just fresh as a warrior. Here we go. I'm not really happy with my clothing choice right now, but it'll get better later. They have some weird clothing and stuff. Eventually I'll get some more armor that's more full, more covers more of my body. <laughs> but it should be fun. And yeah, this is an MMO, guys. I'm going to be doing solo work with this character at first for quite a while. But uh, there's lots of other people on the server. I've, I ran into other people on my other character on the same server and stuff like that. Okay. I say, watch where you're going. Oh, a new recruit, are you? That explains it. Well, far be it from me to chastise someone on his first day. Still, as a citizen of Sandoria, you... Wait, the expedition has returned. Okay. Look at these guys here. Halt, I must inspect your ranks for infiltrators. Oh, let us through. We're exhausted. Still, I must check for infiltrators. As a temple knight, I am responsible for the safety of the citadel. You, you royal knights must cooperate. Is this how you thank us, treating us like criminals? You temple knights have it easy, safe inside these walls. We have no time for your games. How dare you! What is going on here? Lady Kurla! These royal knights refuse to verify their identities. Welcome back, royal knights. You must be weary. After reporting to Prince Treon, shed your armor and see your family as long as they waited for you. Yes, Lady Kurla. Royal Knights, forward! Okay. These knights are back from a dangerous mission. Remember that sometimes rules can be bent. Take pride in your duties and do not mind the trivial. Remember, we are the face of Sandoria. Yes, madame. It's fun reading this. 
Uh, and to the new recruit, I say this, the glory of Sandoria depends on each and every citizen. Good luck. General Corilla, bravo, you are gifted with much sympathy. Without your temple knights, we royal knights could not patrol the wilderness. Your order is a sturdy pillar upon which we rest. We are not your servants, Rahal, but tell me how fared your patrol. You seem drawn to the world outside, Kurilla. Perhaps you find this fortress too constraining. None of your business, but your troops look, did look weary. Did you make any progress against the enemy? No, it is ever the same. No one can tell what the orcs may do next, and always must I struggle with two chains of command. You know, Prince Trion and the Prince Page. I see the wisdom in both their strategies, but... Raha, we need we needn't discuss this before the recruit. Shall we talk to the cap shall we walk to the castle? Alright. It would be an honor. Let us enjoy a bottle of eight twelve Rollenberry in the warmth of my chamber. Well, I prefer the strategy council rune. I shall make Batalia tea, should you thirst. Ha! Huh. Ever the same, I see. Okay. So what do I have to do with all this? That was General Kurla of the Temple Knights. Her order watches over the city and protects the Chateau de Oraguil. Oh, yeah. Rahal's Royal Knights, on the other hand, spy on our enemies and battle fiends. With such desperate duties, the two orders maintain a tense rivalry. Perhaps I could be of service. Is there anything in particular you'd like to know? Um, actually, I think I know all this stuff, but, um, I'm going to click on I want to go out and do battle. Just go. Just got here, and you're aching to leave already. Or you're aching to leave, eh? <laughs> Listen, the lands are wild beyond our gates, filled with fiends and their ilk. Right behind you is the west gate. Beyond that is the wilds of West Ronfair. Should you need directions, ask those around you. Our citizens are friendly for the most part. Excuse me when I um pronounce things wrong. If you want to correct me in the comments, feel free to do so. But. I, I, a lot of these uh, words are a little foreign to me, if you might say that. Okay, here, take this adventure coupon. Give it to Olivia in Victory Square. I'll show you where she is in your map. Now, they actually made the map system really good in this game. So, uh, you have a search, and you can search for all the NPCs, and I'll show you where they are in your map. So that's basically what he's telling me right now. Just open the map from the main menu, select markers, select scroll to the right, so the, uh, Tell you where you need to go to give items to others, like trade from the main menu. Don't you forget it. So you actually have to trade as if you were trading to a character or trading to another player. You trade using that trade feature to NPCs in order to get certain things. Okay. So I'm gonna trade her the adventurer coupon. But first we're gonna go over there, and oh, it's nighttime. Okay. Now there's certain things that I've learned since I've been playing in my other character that you kind of gotta do at the start of this game. Let's go over here and activate this crystal. Register a new home point. You're not able to teleport here from any other home point, which is really handy so I can travel between crystal to crystal, even outside of cities, but I think sometimes it costs money. Uh, so set up my home point. And then um, I'm going to uh, accept that. And that's where we're going to end this episode. Um, it was just basically the intro of who I had to cover. In the next episode, we will go turn in the adventure coupon and uh, trade to the person and see what happens next. We'll learn a little more, a little bit more about the game. I'm gonna set up the configuration um, outside of the video. But that's all I'm gonna do outside the video. So the next video should be right after this, and we should get to some battling and see what's like. I can probably make it to level five before the, these three episodes are over, so we'll be able to get some content going. All right. So I want to thank you for watching this intro to Final Fantasy XI. Playing in the year 2015, near the end of the game's life. I start new though, so it's a little weird. Um, and we'll see what Avengers await granted in Final Fantasy XI. The next time on Happy Beard Games plays Final Fantasy XI. Uh, thanks for watching. Leave any comments. If you liked it, put a like. And feel free to share it with your friends if you find them interested in Final Fantasy. Alright. Uh, Happy Beard Games. Out!